Welcome to our journey along the Indus River, one of the longest rivers in the world. For millennia, its waters have carved a path through towering mountains and arid plains, a lifeline for diverse cultures and ecosystems. Our expedition will take us from the river's glacial origins high on the Tibetan plateau to its final destination, the warm waters of the Arabian Sea. Let's explore the Indus's path, its significance to the human world, and the challenges it faces in the modern age. Our story begins in a place of stark beauty, high on the Tibetan plateau. Here amongst the clouds lies Lake Manasarova, a body of water sacred to millions, fed by glaciers and snowmelt, the lake gives birth to a giant, the Indus River. From its first moments tumbling down rocky slopes, the river gathers strength and purpose. Tibetan gazelles graze on the sparse vegetation while golden eagles soar overhead. The young Indus is a torrent, its waters are milky turquoise as it carries glacial silt downstream. The Tibetan people revere this river, calling it Singi Kamban, the Lion River. But its time in this high altitude cradle is fleeting. The Indus is destined for greater things, to cross borders and shape civilizations. The Indus, or Senge Tsangpo as it's known in Tibet, carves its way through deep gorges, its roar echoing off the canyon walls. This is a landscape of extremes where towering peaks cast long shadows, and the only constant is the relentless flow of the river. Small villages cling to the sides of the canyons, their inhabitants living in harmony with the rhythms of the river. Wild yaks graze on the banks while snow leopards stalk their prey amongst the crags. But its journey is far from over. Ahead lies a formidable barrier, the Himalayas, which the river must breach to reach the Indian subcontinent. After its journey through the Tibetan plateau, the Indus River encounters the Himalayas. These towering peaks guard the Indian subcontinent. The river carves a passage through the mountains, creating the Ladakh Range. Here, the river enters India, marking a shift in geography and culture. Snow-capped peaks rise, dotted with monasteries. This is Ladakh, the land of high passes. The Indus brings life and celebration to this arid land. Its waters sustain fields and orchards. The people live in harmony with the river. The Indus will soon flow through wider valleys, encountering diverse life. As the Indus flows further into Ladakh, it is joined by a series of tributaries, each one adding to its volume and power. These rivers, born from glaciers and snowmelt, high in the Himalayas, bring with them not only water, but also stories of their own journeys. The Zanskar River, known for its challenging rapids, joins the Indus near the ancient capital of Leh. Further downstream, the Suru River, flowing past the imposing Nunkun Massif, adds its waters to the growing torrent. As the Indus gathers strength, the landscape begins to change. The valley widens and the river slows its pace, meandering through a landscape dotted with willow groves and poplar trees. Bird life flourishes, with Himalayan griffins soaring overhead and flocks of bar-headed geese resting on the sandbanks. The Indus is no longer the raging torrent it was in its upper reaches, but a life-giving artery, its waters spreading fertility across the land. As the Indus carves its path through the Indian Himalayas, it becomes a source of not only life, but also power. The immense force of the river has been harnessed to generate electricity for the people of the region. One such project is the Baglihar Dam, a symbol of human ingenuity and the need to balance development with environmental concerns. Further downstream, the Kishanganga hydroelectric plant stands as another example of how the Indus's power can be harnessed for the benefit of humanity. These projects highlight the delicate balance that must be maintained between development and the preservation of the river's natural flow. Environmentalists have raised concerns about the impact of these projects on the river's ecosystem and the livelihoods of communities that depend on its natural flow. The challenge lies in finding a sustainable way forward, one that balances the needs of people with the preservation of this vital river system. The Indus River, having flowed for hundreds of miles through the Indian Himalayas, now approaches the line of control. This heavily militarized zone marks the disputed border between India and Pakistan. 
The river flows unimpeded, symbolizing interconnectedness. As the Indus crosses into Gilgit-Baltistan, it enters a region of breathtaking beauty. Here, the landscape changes once more. Snow-capped peaks give way to arid plains and fertile valleys. This is a land of ancient trade routes and diverse cultures. The river's arrival in Pakistan is greeted with reverence. The Indus sustains vast agricultural areas and rich biodiversity. Flowing southward, the Indus continues to gather strength, becoming a powerful river as it courses through the heart of Pakistan. Here, it is joined by five major tributaries, the Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Sutlej and Bas, which together form the Punjab, or Land of Five Rivers. These tributaries, originating from the Himalayas, bring with them the melted snows and glacial runoff swelling the Indus into a mighty waterway. The confluence of these rivers creates a vast and fertile alluvial plain, one of the most agriculturally productive regions in the world. The Jhelum, known for its beauty, meanders through the Kashmir Valley before joining the Indus. The Chenab, a powerful river, brings with it stories of ancient civilizations that once flourished along its banks. The confluence of these five rivers creates a rich tapestry of life, supporting a diverse ecosystem and sustaining millions of people. Throughout its long journey, the Indus River has been a cradle of civilization, its banks home to ancient cities and modern metropolises alike. One of the earliest and most significant civilizations to flourish here was the Harappan civilization. Known for its advanced urban planning, sophisticated drainage systems and contributions to early human history. In the high altitude desert of Ladakh, Leh, once a major trading post on the Silk Road, still bears witness to the passage of caravans laden with silks and spices. Further downstream, Skardu, nestled in a picturesque valley in Gilgit, Baltistan, offers a glimpse into the region's rich cultural heritage. As the Indus flows into the plains of Pakistan, it encounters cities that have grown up alongside its banks. Sukur, dominated by its iconic clock tower and barrage, stands as a testament to engineering prowess. Hyderabad, with its bustling markets and vibrant culture, reflects the dynamism of modern Pakistan. Each of these cities, shaped by its relationship with the river, offers a unique perspective on the enduring bond between humans and the natural world. After a journey of over 3,000 kilometers, the Indus River finally reaches its destination, the Arabian Sea. Here it fans out into a vast delta, a labyrinth of waterways, mudflats and mangrove forests. This is a place of constant change, where the river's fresh water mixes with the salt water of the sea, creating a unique ecosystem that supports a remarkable diversity of life. The Indus Delta, once a vast and thriving ecosystem, is now facing numerous challenges. Dams and barrages upstream have reduced the flow of fresh water, while pollution from industrial waste and agricultural runoff threatens the delicate balance of this fragile environment. Despite these challenges, the Indus Delta remains a place of remarkable beauty and ecological significance. As we witness the Indus completing its journey, we are reminded of the interconnectedness of all living things and the importance of protecting these vital ecosystems for generations to come. The Indus River, a lifeline for millions, is facing a growing threat to pollution. As the river flows through densely populated areas and industrial zones, it accumulates a toxic cocktail of pollutants, jeopardizing the health of both humans and ecosystems. Industrial waste, often discharged directly into the river without adequate treatment, contaminates the water with heavy metals and other harmful chemicals. Agricultural runoff, laden with pesticides and fertilizers, adds to the pollution load, leading to eutrophication and oxygen depletion. Untreated sewage from urban centers further exacerbates the problem, introducing disease-causing organisms into the water supply. Addressing the issue of pollution in the Indus requires a concerted effort from governments, industries and communities alike. Sustainable water management practices, stricter environmental regulations and public awareness campaigns are crucial to restoring the health of this vital river system. The Indus River, flowing through India and Pakistan, has been a subject of water-sharing disputes. Following the 1947 partition, tensions arose over water allocation, essential for irrigation. The 1960 Indus Waters Treaty, brokered by the World Bank, resolved this issue. 
It allocated the eastern rivers to India and the western rivers to Pakistan. Despite its success, the treaty faces challenges like droughts and hydroelectric projects. The Indus River highlights the complexities of shared water resources and political sensitivities. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey along the Indus River. We've witnessed its birth in the high Himalayas, its passage through diverse landscapes and cultures, and its final journey to the Arabian Sea. The Indus is more than just a river. It is a lifeline, a source of life, and a testament to the power of nature. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating explorations. Let's work together to ensure that the Indus continues to flow for generations to come.